Hi, my name is Caitlin. Hi, my name is Ashley. For our final project, we wanted to share with you all a tribute to our favorite podcast, Welcome to Night Vale. Welcome to Night Vale is a twice monthly podcast in the style of community updates for the small desert town of Night Vale, featuring local weather, news, announcements from the sheriff's secret police, mysterious lights in the night sky, dark hooded figures with unknowable powers, and cultural events. We decided to pay tribute to our radio deities by creating a radio show in their honor. Welcome to Night Vale's host, main character, and narrator is Cecil, which will be voiced by Justin Marsman. The show is bizarre and incorporates elements of surrealism, paranormal horror, deadpan humor, magical realism, and of course, vocabulary units 1 through 30. Please laugh, even if you don't think it's funny. The creator, Joseph Fink, once said he came up with the idea for Welcome to Night Vale by imagining a town where all conspiracy theories were real. So, we invite you to a world where the characters from all the literature we read this year are real. Welcome to AP Lang! Hello, listeners. To start things off, I have been asked to read this brief notice. The City Council announces the opening of a new duck pond at Central Park Junior. They would like to remind everyone that the ducks are not allowed in the duck pond. People are not allowed in the duck pond. It is possible you will see lonely teenagers near the duck pond. Do not approach them. Do not approach the duck pond. The fence is electrified and highly dangerous. Try not to look at the duck pond, and especially do not look for any period of time at the existential teens trying to preserve their childhood. The duck pond will not harm you. And now, the news. Old woman Josie claims that while she was getting her car repaired at the shop run by Wilson, the eyes on the Dr. T.J. Ethelberg billboard moved. She also claims that they belong to God, and that he sees everything. You cannot fool him. What do you think, dear listeners? Is it another Big Brother event, 1984? Might as well make sure you're on your best behavior. Hashtag stay faithful. Oh, here she is. Somehow she broke into our top-notch, highly flammable recording studio. A small scroll has just been handed to me translated from her native language, Latin. It reads that she would like to tell us about the underlying message of the passage. I mean, the Dr. T.J. Eckelberg advertisement. <coughs> but above the gray land, in the spasms of the bleak dust which drift endlessly over it, you perceive the eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg. The eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg are blue and gigantic. Their retinas are one yard high. They look out of no face, but instead from a pair of enormous yellow spectacles which pass over a non-existent nose. But his eyes, dimmed a little by many paintless nights under sun and rain, brood on over the solemn dumping ground. That was truly haunting, old woman Josie. That sounds like something from my childhood. Something I might have once read in a high school English class if only books still worked. They were truly great, my dear listeners. Now, Josie, why did management let you in here? Is this another evaluation? I thought those were weeks away. Oh, who is the management and what do they want? Oh, no, dear listeners, I, I've said too much. The eyes of God have sent me, Radio Man Cecil. They wanted me to let the world know. Oh, that is great news. What did they want us to know, Josie? Hello? Sorry, dear listeners, it seems that we will not know God's true intentions for another day. This just in, listeners. A new man came into town today. Who is he? What does he want from us? Why his perfect, beautiful haircut? Why his perfect and beautiful coat? He says he is an Oxford man. Well, we have all been Oxford men at one point or another in our lives. But why now? Why here? And 
Just what does he plan to do with all those wild and fantastical parties? All of which are held at the sprawling monstrosity of a mansion he bought. The one next to Big Rico's Pizza. No one does a slice like Big Rico. No one. The secret police just sent a smoke signal informing us that the witch trials have begun. Man, that Abigail Williams, you know, the girl who keeps accusing everyone of witchcraft? You know, the one who is sleeping with John Proctor? You know, the one who screams when she sees imaginary burrs? Well, this just in. She has just sent in some tips for getting the man of your dreams. So, like, the main thing is, like, the first thing you you should um, do is, like, find the best dude in town. Like, it doesn't matter if he's married or whatever, just pick one. Preferably one with, like, a name. And then what you're going to do is invite your friends into the wood. You know, just your everyday, like, wood gatherings, complete with, like, um, sacrifice bunnies and a cauldron and incantations and a fire and whatnot, not. you know, like, yada, so yada, 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 dance in the woods, whatever. And then the next day, you gotta shout at your friends. What? You know, stuff like... She makes me drink blood, and she sent her spirit on me in church. She make me, makes me laugh in prayer, and I cannot sleep for dreaming. I cannot dream, but I wake and walk about the house as though I find you coming through the door. Or you could just flat out call them a communist. Does that really work? Well, it didn't for me. I guess John would have rather died than be with me, so yeah. And now, a word from our sponsors. If you or a loved one is accused of being a witch, please contact Atticus, attorney at law. Atticus not only specializes in standing up for those who can't because of a deeply integrated system of oppression, but also in defending your name against witchcraft, because witches are totally real. Great news! Huckleberry Finn has been successfully cloned. Wow. We've decided to name them each Huck and Finn, because his consciousness has now been divided into two separate entities. Yay! Now, all those multiple choice questions about Huck and Finn as two separate characters will actually have some validity. We saw what you did there. We applaud you. Oh. We were not expecting any guests, dear citizens. Could this be the Sheriff's secret police? What does three knocks mean? Could this mean that the glow cloud has finally taken over the sweet, sweet town of Monroe? What will happen to the handsome, mysterious man with the extravagant parties? What will happen to Big Rico's? No one does a slice like Big Rico. In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in, and I don't want to fit in. Have you ever seen me without this stupid hat on? That's weird. As a brief reminder to all citizens, if you or a loved one starts experiencing imaginary gunshot wounds, also known as that stupid business with the bullet in my guts, wherein you are the only guy in the bar with a bullet in their guts, and you keep on putting your hand under your jacket, on your stomach and all, to keep the blood from dripping all over the place, concealing the fact that you're a wounded son of a bitch. Please call Jane for emergency psych psychiatric care. And now, the weather. As the glowing green cloud moves west, we take a moment to remember all the things we yearn for. Waiting for some dream of love like a brief Gatsby and then I look into the mirror and it's only me. And hey now baby, what's on your mind? Do you ride on ancient ships and the doctor Echo Berg's eyes to heaven? A ticket 1927 
any pictures Gonna make you feel sad Gonna make you think of all the good times You thought you never had And hey now baby Used to follow you home Hold on to you at dance school And call you on a phone Forever But now your world begins With never This just in, dear listeners. One of our mysterious citizens has was taken by the dangerous combination of a good time at the pool and a mad garage man. This kind, generous man, that we know only as the voice that keeps talking over the whole story, organized a nice funeral under the dim green glowing cloud the mysterious newcomer loved so much. Though no one has RSVP'd, please, Dear listeners, come out to say goodbye. Let me leave you with this, dear listeners. The sun, the sun, it is rising. It peaks above the football field in the distance, passing through the goalposts, warming our cheeks as we trudge onto our second period final. Although we can never be sure what time, the sun faithfully emerges and liberates us from the darkness. As we take our seats on this fine June morning, we know the sun will come out, eventually. However you may try, you can't get away from it, from moving from one place to another. You can't get away from yourself. Going to another country doesn't make any difference. I've tried all that, you've tried all that. And as we move forward into the next great chapter in our lives, senior year, please keep in mind that you can't get away from yourself by moving from one place to another. Next year, this classroom will still be you. The particle board table will still be in the front of the room. The hallways will not have rearranged themselves. No, dear listeners, there's nothing to that. Good night, A.P. Lang. Good night.